Hey guys, so um, yesterday or class before, whatever, you know what I mean, you guys looked at that really cool map of penguins all over. So today I'm going to kind of break down the little pieces of it and then after you guys are going to take a quiz about speciation of penguins. So uh, we're looking at this through the realm of evolution. So with penguins, you guys saw in the video last time that they evolved many, many thousands of years ago. They're much older than humans, much older than most things. Birds are kind of that very ancient sort of species. Uh, lots of penguins originated in South America. And on ocean currents, they were able to move all over the southern hemisphere. There are no penguins in the northern hemisphere, only in the southern hemisphere. Uh, with this as well, we also have some adaptation. So any adaptation is when a species basically matches its environment. You can acclimate to an environment, but you cannot adapt. So if it gets cold outside, you acclimate by shivering to keep your body warm. Adapting is basically survival of the fittest. So it's traits that you either have or don't have that allow you to become better suited to your environment. So for the penguins up above me, those are emperor penguins, and they're very, very large. They live in very, very cold habitats. Larger animals typically live in colder habitats because they can keep warm. So as far as evolution and all of that stuff, a way, way, way long, long time ago, bigger penguins were healthier because they were able to keep warm. So that became more common in the gene pool. When we're looking at these different species, we can look at any species similarities and differences to tell how different they really are from each other. So as far as penguin size, they typically are smaller when they're closer to the equator, okay? Um, all penguins tend to eat seafood, but you'll see that penguins that are endemic, so endemic means they only live in one area, Pandemic means that they are from lots of different areas. You can also use the word ubiquitous, so they're kind of all over. Um, penguins that live all over typically eat more different types of foods. They're better adapted for more environments. Penguins that are endemic maybe only eat one or two different kinds of foods, and that's it. That's what they're good at eating. Their behavior, though, is really, really similar across all the different species of penguins. They're really, really social. So they, they love being in groups. If you've ever seen penguins at the zoo, they love swimming together. They love it. Okay. When we're talking about these things, we want to keep in mind what a species is. So species are organisms that can interbreed and form viable offspring. So that means that they can make sperm and eggs come together to make a penguin that can also make sperm and eggs that are viable. Sometimes animals, when they get separated spatially or geographically, they become so different. So if you have your original two species, they're the same, and this little group goes off over this way, what happens is over many, many years, they become so different that even if they were to meet up with that original group again, they could not form viable offspring anymore. They can also be separated, what we call mechanically. So uh, if you have like, a giant horse, like a Clydesdale, and a little pony, they're different species because even though they're both type of horse, essentially, they're not going to be able to breed with each other because they're just way too different mechanically. The parts don't fit. So when we're looking at these different species, we have to look at why there are so many different species of penguins. One of the reasons for this is something called adaptive radiation. So if you think of the term radiate, so you have one original point, and radiate means to go off in many, many, many directions. So adaptive radiation is very rapid evolution of species. Oh, hi, Duke. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> okay, bye. Whoa. Maybe I'm getting attacked. I don't know. So it's the rapid evolution of species into many, many diverse ones. Um, reasons why? Maybe there's a new food source. So once again, you have your original two penguins and one is really, really good at eating this new food source. And so it goes off to just find that one new food source. Over time, they become so different from the original ones. Sometimes they have a new environmental niche. So a niche is your job in the environment. Habitat is where you live, a niche is your job. So two species can actually live in the same area, 
if they don't occupy the same niche. That is very, very important. Two species can live in the same area as long as they don't occupy the same niche. So if you have like a king penguin and an emperor penguin, they're both very large species, typically live in the same habitat. One will maybe only eat one type of fish and another one in that environment will only eat the other type of fish. So they're not competing with each other. Sometimes this radiation can also happen after like a natural disaster or a mass extinction because if we kill off a bunch of other species, now we have a bunch of jobs that need to be filled. So adaptive radiation can happen after that as well. So with this here, I have, I'll just move myself. Can we tell when species split off from each other? In short, yes, we actually can. So if we look at these four species of penguins that I have here, we have the rock hopper, the Magellanic down below, the Humboldt and the macaroni penguin, which they're adorable. I mean, they're all adorable, but super cute. So can we tell who's related to who? In short, yes, absolutely we can. Couple different ways to do that. So we can actually look at how they look. So I would say based on how they look, the Humboldt and the Magellanic penguin are probably more closely related. They look a lot more similar. Whereas the rockhopper and the macaroni penguin definitely look a lot more similar with their like crazy feathers on their head and all that stuff. So we can look at their phenotypes. That's what you guys are going to be doing next class, okay? We can also look at where they live. So if we exit this and then look at that map, and if I look at the macaroni penguin, all of these little dots here, these are all macaroni penguins. Macaroni penguin, macaroni penguin. They are pretty much all over the place. Rock hoppers actually live in almost the exact same area, but they're a little more, they tend to be like in this band right here where you see my cursor going, they're in that band, okay? And if we look at Humboldt penguins, they just live right there. That's it. That's the only place that they live. So, and we say that they look a lot like the rock hoppers. Okay. And then the last one that we had was the Magellanic penguin. Yep. So this is the Magellanic penguin. And they only live like right here. That's it. Okay. So it would make sense based on where they live. The Magellanic penguin lives really, really close to the macaroni penguin, but they don't look anything alike. So are they more related? Actually, that's what we're going to find out. Kind of crazy. Okay. So we can look at geographically. Last thing that we can look at is genetics. So we can actually look at certain DNA sequences that all of these penguins have in common and see how similar or different they are. And we've done this before. We've done this so many times, guys. So we looked at lions, how similar and different they are based on their genetics. We looked at otters, how similar and different they are based on their genetics. We can look at all of these species and actually figure out when they branched off from each other. So if you guys remember from the Africa unit, we could actually tell if we, you look at the map of Africa and all the different lion prides, when they actually branched off and which pride was more closely related to another pride. We can actually do that oh, over here. <laughs> we can actually do this with all of these species down here, which is super, super cool. So this is what we're going to be working on for the next couple of class periods. I just wanted to like um, give you guys a little bit of a background, see me a little bit, Duke, wherever he went. I don't know. Um, after this, make sure you guys take your quiz. And then next class, we're going to be looking at how we actually classify all of these different species. Miss you guys. Bye.